Hello my friends. I'm going to be straight up with you right now. I am leaving on vacation in about 20 minutes. So my wrap up is going to be brief. I'm trying not to cut a lot. Um, so I'm going to say um even more than normal and probably not be as eloquent as I would dream myself to be. I just want to get through these 23 I think books in a timely manner or is it timely matter I don't know normally I do a little bit of prep work and try to at least remember what the books are about if not what I thought about them um but in this one I I don't I don't know anything so somebody said that I should organize my wrap up someday by least favorite to favorite font and so I did that um with some interesting results because a lot of them are really similar so I guess my least favorite font and I'm gonna have to hold it up pretty close for you to see all of these. This is Witchopoly. It's a Sabrina the Teenage Witch book by John Vornholt and this is like giving papyrus vibes and this I read I'm not gonna talk about all the reasons that I read these books. You're here you're on my channel you get it you've heard me talk about almost all of these already. This I gave not a rating. Uh, it, it gets a high rating. I don't know what it would be, four or five stars for like a middle grade silly little book where Sabrina is playing a game that's like Jumanji but about witches and the things that happen in the game happen in real life so she like loses her magic, can't find her dad in the woods. Um, she ends up in space at one point. It was a really good time. My next least favorite font is this one, which is funny because it's actually similar to the types of fonts that I use on my channel, but I just don't love it on a book cover. Um, this is Breathing Underwater by Sophie Hardcastle, which is about uh, Ben and Grace Walker, our twins. So this is set in Australia and we have a girl who's going through some difficult stuff um, with her friendships, with her twin brother. With some relationships she gets into some bad situations because she's grieving it's a book about grief i gave it three stars it's like a hard-hitting ya set near the ocean so it's got like good atmosphere vibes but overall it was just okay then oh i put the obelisk gate next by nk jemison just because there's nothing wrong with this font it's just like did it do anything for me is the focus working <laughs> It's maybe a little too skinny, I think, because I do have this font seen again later, but thicker, and it's higher on my list. So this is the sequel to The Fifth Season. The Fifth Season, I gave five stars I love so much. The sequel, I think I'm giving this a three and a half. Like, I enjoyed it, but it very much feels like a second book, a middle book in a series because in the first book we're really dropped into this world. Uh, there's a lot to learn really quickly and there is some info dumping but it's more so just like you're in this experience. There's not a lot of setup for the way that the world is. You learn throughout the book what a fifth season is, an extended winter, the collapse of society, the apocalypse. You meet all of these different POVs. They're all super interesting because they're written differently. Um, and it's weird because in this one, those POVs kind of continue, like the style, but you kind of lose the gimmick once you get the reveals. So I hope that the third book, if it's continuing these POVs, there's a reason for it. And there are things that I can come up with, with why it would be doing those things. In this world where we're constantly on a brink of collapse, there are people who can sense these earth shakes, um, the tectonic plates moving or whatever can control them. You really get into the psyche of a lot of the characters and that's my favorite thing about it is how character driven the series is and how well you get to know these people. And it's not just info dump like there's a little bit in amongst it and there's all of these kind of reveals. And then in this book those reveals don't go anywhere really because at the end of the book you're kind of in the same situation. It's like in the fifth season you learn about certain things and then in this book you're just learning more about them and then the things that got revealed in the first one at the end they're like okay so all those things that were revealed now let's actually do something about it and I think the third book will be very action 
focused. Oh my gosh, I'm doing a terrible job. How does anybody review fantastical books in the middle of a series? Because I can't talk about anything we found out in the first book. I will just say that there are an equal amount of questions as there are answers in this book, which is what I consider like the middle book syndrome. Learned a lot, but we're still wondering a lot and nothing really happened that was super surprising, which is what I loved about the first book. Ooh, next, very different vibe. This is Historic Tales of Mayo. The font, I think it's again, just a little too thin. I like a plumper font for my books. I think this has like three reviews on Goodreads. So it is a story from, well, it's a collection of stories from a son like taking his dad's stories and putting them in here and then writing his own things. There's also a mix of poetry and it's like historic tales of this town or this county called Mayo. Um, but it also is like family stories. So like personal experiences with like neighbors, but also like the history of Ireland and how certain things have gone down the effect that different things had on not just the county, but the country. I gave it four stars and that's that. Then we have Out Behind the Barn by John Bowden and Chad Lutsky. Guess what? My critique of the font is the same. <laughs> um, this is about, ooh, this is about two boys and they live with this woman is it their mother? Is it their captor? We don't really know the vibes going in, but we just are from these boys' perspective, watching out their window as the woman that they live with is carrying a body into the house. And they're like, oh great, she caught another one. So then we go through this little family bringing a couple different people into their home and what happens to them. And it's like a, I would say paranormal horror. It's unsettling for sure at times. I feel like it's the perfect length. It leaves you wondering things like how did we even get to this situation to begin with? Because you don't, you don't really understand how all the characters are feeling by the end. I gave this like four, maybe even four and a half stars just because it was so strange. It's not the most unique premise I've ever read, but I've never read a book that quite goes this direction and ends the way that it ends and goes as boldly in such a short time that this one does. So that's that. I can't talk about it more because it's so short that like you just need to dive in. Then I have Not Good for Maidens by Tori Bovolino, which was kindly sent to me. Um, here's the font. I think it's fine. This is a story about the goblin market. So we're in two different timelines. We have a mother and then a daughter, but also like sisters and aunts that we're following. But essentially in the past, um, we have a couple characters who got involved with the goblin market where the goblins are taking advantage of people, tricking people. And then current day, we have a girl who has not been told anything about the goblin market, her family's history with the goblin market. I would call this like urban fantasy. And she's just getting introduced to this idea. Um, and I thought that it was fine, like overall, I didn't have a lot of issues with it, but I ended up giving it like 2.5 stars because it just did a lot of things that I don't love. And so it ended up feeling pretty mediocre by the end. The writing was fine, but there's something about like a lack of communication and urban fantasy for me where a character knows nothing about a world and the rest of their family does and them not giving any information about it. But then suddenly she's the only one who can save the entire thing. Often in stories like this, there is a POV I prefer over the other, which was true. I do love that there's casual queerness and lots of representation in here, bisexual, pansexual, ace. Um, I didn't like how many like different magical entities there were or could be and they didn't get explored enough. Maybe if there was another 100 pages or if this was a series and it happened at a little slower of a pace, I could have enjoyed it more. Also, I don't love like always getting to know something before the characters constantly and just waiting for them to find out about everything. I really don't have any hard feelings about this. It just wasn't like perfect, which is not surprising for this type of genre. I think it's put itself in 
uh, like gothic fairy tale horror. Then we have honestly like a bunch of super generic fonts that I feel like I have to put all together. As far as my ranking, like there's nothing to write home about, about any of these specifically. You know what I mean? Just a lot of sans serif situations. So it doesn't really matter what order I go in, so I'll just go in backwards of what I just did. This is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. And this is about love between two black girls. One of them is from Trinidad, one of them is from the United States. Um, the girl in Trinidad is kind of being kicked out by her family um, to go stay with other family in the States. And it's the connection that they make and the space that they find for themselves. It's all about like hardships that they've gone through, whether it be illness or discrimination and finding a space where people will love them and support them. And they really find that in each other. And it was this beautiful love story. And it's got a little bit of strangeness. The ending was a really surprising ending and I loved it so much. It's really about I think the process of healing and these two character voices are some of the most distinct that I've read all year. They were so different and so clear and felt really genuine and it was just such a beautiful time. Um, I understand now why people haven't talked about what the weirdness or magical element is because I've always wondered like what is the vibe of this and now I get it and I get why people don't talk about it um, because it is like a reveal and it's very interesting. I gave this five stars. So that's that. Let me change my battery. Let me run through some ones I don't really have strong feelings about because I really do need to go. We've got The Chain by Adrienne McKinty, which is about a woman who gets a phone call one day saying that her daughter has been kidnapped and is going to be murdered unless she goes and kidnaps another child and then does the same thing. So she is now responsible for kidnapping and calling another family and saying the same thing. Like, you need to kidnap someone or I'm gonna kill your kid. And it's pretty like, I don't know, clear what's going on. I don't really remember if this has great twists and turns in it. I feel like there are a couple reveals. Overall, I gave it four stars just cause it was a fun thriller. And that's, I guess what I was needing in the moment. That, wow, this one's really forgettable. Like I did give it four stars, but I can't remember anything that was going on much beyond the basic premise. So sorry. Uh, this one is A Heart in the Body in the World by Deb Coletti, which is about a girl who has experienced trauma and she is now on a run across the country um, and she's trying to get this, the, really she has the support of her country. She's trying to heal from what's happened to her and there is a trial in progress and um, she just encounters a lot of different people on her run. She has some family members with her who are supporting her, um, some who are challenging her, who are like, you don't need to do this, like just heal and cope at home. We're here to support and love you. Um, but she really, I think, feels guilt towards what happened to her. That's like a reveal of the book is what she went through. But if you need to definitely look up content warnings and she I think views the run as kind of like a punishment to her body and wants to feel the pain um, but also wants to feel like she's in control and to take some power back and um, just accomplish something. I gave that let's give it five I think it was like four and a half I don't it doesn't matter <laughs> let's say five stars then the opposite a one star was seven days by Patrick Senecal which I've completely forgotten everything about besides um, a man's daughter is murdered, her, his young daughter, and he's getting revenge on the man. Now, I thought that this was like a thriller and I was like, oh, I wish there was more mystery in it, but it's actually a horror novel. Um, so it is like graphic and it's, it's very graphic. It's one of the most graphic things I've ever read. It was horrible. Um, but I understand that there wasn't meant to be mystery elements to it. So I apologize for that like misinterpretation of it. It was still like really bad though. Like I had a really bad time reading it, not just in what I felt like was gratuitous explanations 
and constant returning to certain uh, conversations but also just in that like I don't really get the point of reading the same scenes over and over again like this torture because it didn't really go anywhere and the thing about that is I'm sure there have been books that I've read in my past that you could describe the exact same way of horror books that I've loved so it could just be a timing thing um I don't know how to really explain that one but it was really <laughs> not a good time then I read Normal People by Sally Rooney which is about oh gosh this couple what are their names no I won't be watching the adaptation Connell and Marianne I enjoyed this I gave it four stars I thought it was a fine time I went into this not expecting like a romance which which it wasn't which I was glad for <laughs> um I feel like I the most negativity I've heard from people is when they thought that it was going to be like a a really like epic romance between these two characters who constantly are like coming together falling apart whatever I don't know what the show or is it a movie does differently but also these characters are like pretty insufferable but I felt like that was a pretty good time so they're just constantly having these really frank conversations about like what their relationship should be should they just be friends should they sleep together should they date other people um it's kind of an exhausting time throughout their relationship which was fun for me to read I guess uh they also just think that they're more emotionally mature than they are because they're like well let's just talk about things from like a frank perspective and like let's be reasonable but also they definitely are letting their emotions come into play a lot there's a lot of miscommunication I thought it was I thought it was good then we have Hyde by Kirsten White now this is going to be a live show soon so I obviously don't want to give all of my thoughts and this one really excites me because I have seen mostly five stars and one stars and that's what I love like obviously it sucks when I make people pick up a book club selection and they don't like it like I'm so sorry that that happened to you and that I contributed to your misery but I would almost rather that happen but listen I gave it two stars too um then everybody just gives it three stars and we don't really have anything to talk about I feel like there's a lot to talk about with this and there are many opinions floating around and I'm not going to tell you this is objectively bad obviously but it's not what I'm looking for in a horror book and it's not what I'm looking for in an amusement park book and it's not what I'm looking for in a paranormal book and it's not what I'm looking for in an adult book so all of it worked against me in my enjoyment because these are teen characters <laughs> I'm not going to harp on this too much, but it is one of my biggest qualms right now because you know when you read a YA book and you're like, this is so unrealistic, like where are their parents, how are they doing all of this stuff, how do they even have access to these things, that's what I feel like happened in this book. I feel like Kirsten White, having written only YA before this, did that. And then somebody read it and was like, the book doers are going to rip you apart. <laughs> the reviewers are going to hate this. They hate when teen characters like don't have parents or they don't have an established like whatever. How did they afford this? How did they do this? Um, not just with our main character, because obviously, if you don't know the plot, she is an orphan. Her entire family is dead and that's why she thinks that she's a perfect candidate for this hide and seek game in an amusement park where she could win thousands of dollars because she hid once and she survived so she can easily do it now just as like a fun game obviously it gets more deadly than she's expecting but I feel like somebody was like you need to just age up your characters and so she just aged up her characters to get around any issues that readers would have or any plot holes because these read like teen characters in teen situations but we're supposed to think that they're 30. Meanwhile, the way that they speak, the way that they act, the way that they interact with the world is all very young. And it was a tough one. The number one thing that people seem to say that's positive about this is the atmosphere and the setting. And I could not disagree more. And I really want to have a conversation about it because I feel like the biggest thing that was lacking for me was an idea of where we were, what everything looked like, how far they were walking, 
how close the distances were. I was lost. I don't feel like I have a lot of really negative feelings towards this because it was so short that I didn't feel like I invested too much of my time into it. I finished it and I was like, well, that was just like one of the most average things I've ever read. If there was another 100 pages and we could have gotten some mystery, some thrilling elements, some tense moments, I could have liked it. I thought there was too many characters, was not expecting to read kind of from all these different POVs, and then each chapter just like ending without a true like piece of evidence of what happened to that person. No gore. After the first, I don't even know, 75 pages, it's like, okay, I get it. I get it. And like, now what? But instead it's just like further hammering home what is really happening here and like I got it a long time ago. <laughs> Let's move on to A Girl is a Half-Born Thing by Amir McBride. This is a decent font. I like how the title itself is laid out I guess in this shape, whatever you want to call it. I didn't rate this book because I, I don't know how to feel about it afterwards. Um, it's really not a writing style that I am familiar with nor comfortable with reading. Uh, it's very stilted and I'm trying to remember how it described itself. Irish lilt, uh, sentence fragments, a lot of, it's just very unfamiliar. It's following the story of a girl who's experienced a lot of traumatic things and I don't know how to talk about it. It was just really hard to read. Um, I don't know how to recommend it either. I feel like I've read lots of things with similar topics, but just the way that it was described and where the focus was a lot of the time told in this style, it lost me in ways that I can't really fault it for, but also can't really describe, so I'm sorry. Uh, next up I have Bitter by Akwake Amezi, which I like the font itself, but also like the the colors and how it's all dotted and whatnot so in this book which is a prequel to pet which i gave four stars i also gave this four stars it's following a character named bitter who is just coming to this school it's the first time that she has felt safe in her life uh protected and where she really belongs but there are lots of protests in the street. There's lots of injustices that the people at the school and her friends are fighting against. There's a revolution and she's struggling with knowing her place in it. Since she just feels safe for the first time, she doesn't know if she wants to participate in all of this other stuff because she just wants to feel peace. Um, but she becomes involved with it and there's a lot of great lessons in here about the importance of art, uh, she is an artist, in enacting change in the world and how everybody has a different role in protests and in revolution. Uh, there are monsters born from art. That's a really fascinating part of this whole world and I would read more in this series. There's a lot of characters that I enjoy and I feel like we could expand in this world a lot. Then we have In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado, which is my second thing from this author. The first one was a short story collection her Body and Other Parties, which is one of my favorites of all time. Um, this is like a memoir, an experimental memoir. It's told in vignettes and it's about um, her experience with an abusive relationship. I gave this five stars. Every single like little vignette, obviously being a vignette, it's short and it takes on a certain trope. So the whole thing is like the dream house is the perfect relationship and it's how the dream house exposes itself and crumbles over time so we have different things like um that was a word i didn't know how to pronounce um dream house as daydream dream house as erotica dream house as bluebeard and some different like fables cultural references media just different things that she's using to explain different moments she had in this relationship um, where she felt belittled, where she experienced violence. It's one of the most like vulnerable things I've ever read. It was really difficult to read. I read this throughout like the entire month. Um, 
which it definitely lends itself well to being made up of all of these short moments but I think it it's so important to talk about violence how much violence there is like everywhere and how a lot of times it gets ignored or people like to pretend it doesn't happen for example in queer relationships it's obviously hard to acknowledge that this is a thing that happens to people let alone somebody who narrates her own audiobook um so it feels very intense um and unsettling even to read uh very important read fantastic audiobook then I have some pretty, oh, like handwritten loopy titles. So I gave these very different ratings. Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton is an apocalyptic story following the perspective of a crow. I don't need to say much about it because like regardless of what happened in the plot, I just don't like reading from animal perspectives. And that's something that I learned about myself. Um, where it was supposed to be funny, I found it cringy. Where it was supposed to be dark, I found it weird. Where it was supposed to be weird, I found it boring. It was just not for me. But I'm glad to have read it, so I know more about myself. Sometime in Summer by Katrina Leno was kindly sent to me, and it's one of my favorite YA books with a little bit of magic that I've read. Um, I just think this is what Katrina Leno was born to write and she does it so well and it's so fantastic so we're following a 14 year old girl whose life is just shifting her parents are getting divorced her mother's selling her bookstore and she's spending the summer on the east coast um back where her parents originally met and just spending time on the sea and meeting new friends and learning more about herself and the way that she moves about the world and why her parents aren't going to be together and there's also this like meteor shower that only comes around every once in a while and that's where like some of the interesting stuff comes into play. I really love books like this where we just get to spend a couple months with a character at a pivotal point in their lives and just seeing how things are shifting with their perspective on everything around them. It's like such an important life-changing summer for her in a lot of ways. Another five star is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. I really like how the font and the title like plays in with the cover itself. It's funny when I posted this picture I talked about it people were like oh I didn't even realize I was a horse. So the story kicks off with a boy and a horse on the river and something like unsettling happens and then you are listening to a story being told by the young boy to this woman um so the synopsis says a young woman lies dying in a rural hospital clinic a boy named david sits beside her together they tell a haunting story of broken souls toxins and the power and desperation of family so it's about motherhood and he's like telling her the story of what just happened to them because she doesn't fully she doesn't fully get oh, it's so hard to explain she's also interacting with the boy's mother and she has a daughter of her own and it's about like how the children are interacting with each other and she's very scared of this little boy his own mother is clearly a little unsettled by him and they just tell an interesting story then I have And Then I Woke Up by Malcolm Devlin and the font is a little frightening which definitely depicts the vibe of the story. So in this it's kind of a zombie apocalypse but the apocalypse is in your mind so it makes you think that they're zombies. That's basically the whole premise. So we're following a character who is in an institution um, after murdering a bunch of zombies and it's about um, how easily the human mind can convince itself that something is happening. It's fantastic. I gave it four stars. Another four stars, This Vicious Grace by Emily Feed, which has a nice font. I quite like it. It's crisp. And this is a story of a girl who has magic bestowed on her from the gods and she is the protector of this like 
country society of people and she has to train to like fully access her own power and enhance the power of a fonte so there's fontes and there's fenestras she's a fenestra she's in charge um there are like demon creatures that will come and she needs to train herself and her fonte who's like her her perfect like match her partner in life and she has killed a bunch of them by accident because her touch is deadly um especially if she hasn't like if she hasn't found the right fonte if it's not the right person if they haven't done everything correctly she'll kill them by accident the book has a sort of countdown to when she's done her training when there might be a battle that's going to happen she only has so much time to choose her next fonte um so this time she's going to do it a little bit differently and also she doesn't trust the people she's surrounding herself with and so she's gone out to find a bodyguard um from like the rough part of town so we've got a like bad boy bodyguard and it's very much a romance every time i see this book talked about it says it's like an epic fantasy with a little bit of romance and i feel like it's a romance with a little bit of fantasy it's about the psychological impact that not being able to touch people without killing them has and she's a very empathetic character uh, she definitely didn't want to take any lives, doesn't want to take any more lives. She wants to change the structure of what's going on a little bit and just wants to protect everybody. And I thought it was really good. I had a fun time. It's a duology. I think I'll pick up the sequel. I wish it was adult because it gets a little silly and gimmicky. Not that an adult take on this wouldn't be that, but I feel like this is a story that's been told a lot. So I don't know that it does anything new, but I thought it was a good time. Then we have the Between by Tanana Reeve Dew, which I gave, it was four and a half or five stars. I'm going to give it a confident five. Uh, this is about a man who almost drowned when he was a kid and his grandma saved him. And now he's being like haunted by death. He thinks that death is following him. And he it's just like a story about family too he is married to one of the first black judges where they live and um she is being stalked and harassed and discriminated against and so he wants to like be there for her be there for her his children um he works as like a social worker so he's just like a loving man but there's something going on with him that he can't like always control what he's doing or isn't always in reality there's all of these dreamlike sequences where you are with him along the way you're not like understanding what's going on you're just in it with him so you get frustrated with him and the way that he's treating his family it gets dark and it makes it made me so angry um but it also just had me feeling so confused but intentionally because you never really know if what's happening is real right along with the character and that's my favorite kind of fever dream vibe to be in because he had his brush with death he's basically in this in between right like spirits and the real world but even going into it knowing that that's the vibe there are still some really fantastic reveals i loved the ending of this um, it's about like the collapse of a man's stability um, and also the collapse of a family unit and it was it was fascinating and I only recently realized that this is actually her debut novel I did not know that this is the first thing she ever came out with and I think more people should I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have read it like I'm behind but like I need more people to read it it was so interesting and then oh my gosh i'm ending with a bunch of my favorites i just realized woman eating by claire coda you can't totally see the font but i just love that it's like blood dripping and i think that's really special <laughs> so this is a vampire story it's a contemporary literary vampire story where i would sell it more as just a sad girl book it's about a woman who is being separated from her mother for the first time 
um, her mother is going to move into a home where someone else can care for her. She's on her own for the first time. She's starting a new internship. Um, she's trying to like make friends and it's just like a really new adult scenario where you have these like awkward stumblings um, with the man who lives in the apartment next to you and your first day on the job everyone just expects you to know what you're doing but you look like an idiot. She's also having a lot of issues with like disordered eating and she's obsessed with watching like what I eat in a day YouTube videos all day long um, watching other people eat and wanting to feel what that's like because she can't as she's a vampire. So there's always this back ground noise of her wanting blood, needing to find blood. Uh, she's not a character who you can expect to go like consume a bunch of people or eventually the bloodlust will take over and she ravages her entire like, you know, art class. It's just a lot of inner turmoil and accepting herself. Her mother turned her into a vampire but she sees her as evil and thinks that she is just a terrible person for being a vampire. So she has to grapple with that and also trying to find blood and just being tempted by every single person she passes, like staring at their neck. If somebody gets a cut near her, she has to like remove herself from the situation and try to come back to control over herself. It was such a good time, but I really don't think I would recommend this to many people because yeah, the vibes I just think are polarizing. And then lastly, my favorite book of the month is my favorite font of the month. Who knew? I just love how this is broken up. It's like a neon sign vibe. It's simplistic, but I think it's nice. Um, it's called Out There by Kate Folk. It's a series of stories. They're all very strange. If you watch my most recent vlog, I talk specifically about my favorite stories and the entire plot of them because they're so interesting. They're about like really realistic AI and what it's like to date one of them. It's about living in a world where inner aesthetics are as important as outer aesthetics like your literal organs and how beautiful they are. And then there's stories about just mostly women existing in a world that like doesn't cater to them, taking control of their own situations um, in these very weird futuristic kind of setups. There's a lot of great real world commentary that I feel like everybody can relate to, but they're just in these completely obscure scenarios that make it so funny. And so it's just, it gives you such a strange feeling. And that's it. I feel like some things are missing. I know when I originally took my stack photo, something was missing and now I feel like something else is missing. Anyway, that is, I think everything that I read in the month. I have lots of vlogs, uh, I think, well, lots as in three that I posted this month of reading a lot of these titles. If you want to just hang out with me, see my thoughts as I'm reading. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know as always, if you're going to pick any of these up, if you already have, um, any of your contrasting opinions to mine, or if you have similar thoughts, I love to hear anything you have to say in the comments and I'll be down there chatting with you. Bye.